Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin Pierre, and on today's episode, we're going to be checking out part three of my Tully Barden look at their signature range. This one here is the 228. I've already covered the uh, Sovereign and the 225, so if you're interested in those, you can go and check those out on the channel as well, and I'll be covering the 500 at some point in the relative near future. But yeah, today we have the 228, and this is the Burgundy Cask Finish. Now, if you're not well versed in Tully Barden, uh, these are a Highland uh, distillery and the 228, 225, 500 that you see quite often relates to the uh, the cask size that these have been finished in. These are all finished whiskies, in, you know, especially in this case, it's a finished whisky. It's been aged for uh, an unknown period of time in ex-bourbon casks and then finished for about 12 months, we think, in uh, what they call a burgundy cask. But in reality, that's a uh, Pinot Noir cask, you know, red wine, it's red wine cask. Um, Burgundy obviously relates to the region of France. Uh, one of the things that we had a virtual tasting with these guys recently, one of the things that we couldn't really nail down was was colouring. They do add colouring to some of their range. So uh, although this is a, obviously a slightly different colour to the other ones, I'm not going to go into that too much because we can't guarantee it hasn't been added colour. I don't talk about it on the channel, but as you guys know, don't tend to be too bothered about whether it's got colouring or not. I just prefer it to be on the label if it has color or if it's no added color then whatever you know on the label either way um, same with chill filtration I don't think we know about that on this um, I had a look through the deliveries but you know it's 43% uh, again I don't particularly care about chill filtration I know it's a bit of a hot topic at the moment people are getting up in arms about chill, chill filtration but you know um, for me not every whiskey needs to fit that kind of like um, the, the connoisseur's choice almost you know um, there are, you know, every whiskey has its time and a place, and if the price is right, that's the important part of this. Then you know you can you can miss things like age statement, uh, ABV, colouring, all that. Like you can miss all of that if the price is right and the quality is there. You know the the, the flavour profile was good and you enjoy it. That's the main thing. Let's get onto this one and then see what we've got in the glass, uh, and we'll talk about value in a little bit. No, not just whiskey glass as well. Nice, nice, nice. Let's have a little note go on the nose and see what we've got. Okay, for me it's quite light, it's uh, very fruity. We talk about red fruits a little bit on this. Um, the, you know, the, the marketing says things like cherries, fine, yeah, I kind of get it. Quite honey forward, I think, on this as well. So it's really nice honey nose. Yeah, it looks like it's quite light, it's quite light. It's not like in your, in your face or anything like that. Let's try on the palette. Mm -hmm. It's, um... It's fairly sweet, actually. It's not like overly, overly sweet, but it is fairly sweet. More of those fruits, more of those honeys coming through. Again, the marketing says things like chocolate. Yeah, um, I could be convinced of that quite easily. It isn't the most complex whiskey in the world. is isn't trying to be, I don't think. Uh, and the finish is probably, I would say, medium. Um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it is what it is with this one, right? It's On the website, it's 45 quid, but you can easily get this on Amazon, or uh, or whatnot for less than 40 about 35 i would say and in that sort of price bracket i think we're talking about you know a, a fairly okay whiskey um 45 quid i think is probably a bit too much but that's just my personal opinion the interesting thing about this one is that um when i did the i, I did an online tasting with talibard in a little while ago and uh, it had th this whole range in them and this wasn't my favorite dram of, of, of the tasting at all but as you can see i've gone through this bottle uh and you know, i mean you might have seen on top here it said sort of paper motion but the, you know these guys sent me this bottle and i've been trying to decide about this one this one's taking me so long to cover it i've been trying to decide about this one for a while and i've been sort of drinking through it seeing as i go and the one thing i've noticed about this and the, the whole range to be fair is that it um its flavor profile changes with my mood and just kind of what i'm feeling at the moment um, and it's one of those things where it's interesting to have them all available to me because I can pick whatever I, I'm desiring that night. You know, this one here, what, some days it, it's been an incredible whiskey for me and some days I've been like, been like mm, not too sure. And same with the rest of them, you know, same with the 225 and the 500 and the Sovereign, all, all of them. Um, it, they've been like, if, if I only had that bottle, I would have kind of an ebb and flow with them. But because I'm able to pick and choose depending on how I'm feeling, it's been a really interesting thing. 
so yeah, what I'm trying to say is that although this hasn't been my favourite uh, on several occasions, it also has been my favourite on several occasions of the, the signature range. Right now, as I'm talking, in this glass, I'm really enjoying this. This is the first whiskey I've had today. And I think it really benefits from that. It's like, um, you know, the, the whole range is kind of like a, the start of a of a of an evening kind of vibe to it. You know, obviously I wouldn't be coming to this after drinking any peat or anything like that, but yeah, really enjoying this one today. Whereas previously it's been, um, you know, merely okay, and today it's great. Yeah, I think it's one of those things. Um, it, they're a bit fly, they fly under the radar a little bit, and hopefully my videos have kind of enticed you to go and check them out a little bit. Um, there'll be some links below, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, for me, two to eight fits quite nicely in this. Um, uh, the sherry cask, I'm looking forward to bringing that to you because that's always been a, a highly rated one for me. But again, it ebb and flows, it ebb and flows. I'm wittering on a bit. Check it out if you want to check it out. If you have checked this out, let me know what you think of it below because I know there's mixed reviews on this one. Uh, and if you've tried more of them, let me know what's your favourite of the, the Talabardon range. Uh, and hopefully you've noticed that I've been putting some effort into pronouncing that properly now. So I've been saying Talabardon instead of Talibadeen, which is what I want to say. But uh, yeah, Talabardon. Thanks for checking out the video. I'll be covering the 500 soon, but not too soon. I'm going to be checking out something uh, a little bit interesting next week. So make sure you keep it dialed. Catch you again.